very closely. She wrote a book on it. January 6th, how Democrats used the Capitol protest to launch a war on terror against the political right, which is a perfect summation of what actually happened. Julie Kelly joins us now. Julie, thanks so much for coming on. Um, so it dawned on us as, as these tapes made very clear that the story we've been presented is an, is an absolute fabrication. It's a lie. It's a fraud. Um, that people may still be in jail on the basis of these lies. And so we wanted to talk to you for an update on where those cases are tonight. So, yes, there are, well, at least 100 men have been held under pretrial detention orders over the past two years. That means that a judge has denied them bail because the government, DOJ, successfully argued that that individual was a threat to the community. This includes, Tucker, people charged with nonviolent offenses like obstruction and conspiracy. So, of course, they, they don't have access to what could very easily be ex exculpatory evidence contained in this video. But aside from the now now, I think around three dozen men who are held under pretrial detention orders. Tucker, believe it or not, there are some men going on 24, 25, 26 months denied bail, languishing in jail, including the D.C. Gulag, as the government continues to delay their trials. This all has the imprimatur, by the way, of every judge on the D.C. District Court. I want to emphasize the real villains here are the federal judges in Washington, D.C., who right. have allowed the government to play every single game to keep this evidence out of the hands of defendants, violating their oath of office to protect the rights of defendants and their due process rights. So I really want to emphasize that. Um, but look, Tucker, there's a thousand criminal defendants right now. Half of them have pleaded guilty or been convicted at trial. So, and the government just announced in two months ago in January that they were still uploading gl global, they call discovery, which means material related to the entire investigation. What they did was arrest people first, find the evidence later, and cover up what could um, potentially uh, exonerate these defendants. If this were happening in any other country, the U.S. State Department would immediately acknowledge that these were violations of the most basic human rights, these are political prisoners. Mm -hmm and the U.S. government would condemn it, but it's happening here and it's ignored, except by you. And I so appreciate your tireless reporting on this. Julie Kelly, thank you. Thank you, Tucker. What inspired you to participate in the revival? Full on, it was just the Holy Spirit. I was like, we're six hours away. If Jesus was right here and he was here at Asbury, we would want to come see Jesus. We had three years of COVID. We, a lot of us had, we were locked down. It was just a really sad time for, for our country, I'm sure for all the, all the nations. And now it's like you're seeing this move of God and it's like people are just, they're hungry. They're hungry for something good. That first night in Hughes, I sat there and I just cried. Um, I could feel the presence of God. What do you want them to take away from it? One, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's to one, ask God and to experience Him yourself. Our Creator, God, putting this desire in us. And I think like specifically like our generation, we're seeing so many high school age, college students from all around come. I mean, also the general public. But we have this deep desire in us to like be filled with something that's more than anxiety and depression and things that will fall away. And so like, it's just contagious. We're called to go and to be, to be a light to others and be a light in the world. The same Holy Spirit that is in here Auditorium is around you right now. You just have to ask him and invite him into your heart.